Welcome back. Now Old Mutual is out with its full year print reporting double digit growth in both the top and bottom line. This has the investment and insurance group posted a 28% jump in headline earnings per share as well as an increase of 17% in sales. And joining me now to contextualize the print is Old Mutual Chief Financial Officer Kaspar Trotsky. Thank you so much for your time, Kaspar. The year that was, we saw investors pu uh, pushing up that share price by over 4% today. Uh, frame that performance for us and uh, the investor reaction to the numbers. Yes, thank you very much, Dorian. Um, if you look at the operating conditions that this result was delivered in, you know, it's been really tough. So we're very pleased with the fact that we were able to deliver the growth that we delivered. Um, and in fact, we, we feel that we've taken market share in most of our businesses, you know, so that's a key feature of the result for me. Mm -hmm. And if you look at our value of new business, um, that grew very strongly at 37% which means that, you know, customers are, are, are looking at our propositions favorably and we are able to, to grow those. And so we're generating value for, for our customers and for, and for shareholders. And the value of new business is a, is a measure of, you know, the, the, the growth that we're driving in the business going forward. So, so I was very pleased with that result. Um, with that, we also then had very good operating profits hmm. um, in difficult conditions. We had a bit of assistance from the markets, so both on the equity on the equity markets we saw positive returns. One market we saw some some good returns there, and that helped our you know our client portfolios, the investments in our client portfolios, and the returns on those portfolios were better than expected. And we also saw good returns from our shareholder investment portfolio. So overall, a very pleasing result. Mm. Uh, you talk about this growth in uh, the value of new businesses. Of course, uh, feeding into that is uh, the margin uh, growth in terms of uh, new business. So that does fall in line with uh, in your target range. What's enabled that achievement? And are you comfortable with the current sales mix? Look, um, we can always improve on on the sales mix, but yeah. yes, we are comfortable with the, the strong traction we've had in the margin. If you unpack that margin, we saw, you know, margin expansion in our mass and foundation cluster as well as, as in our personal finance business, or be that of of a of a bit of a low. Um, okay. But both of those showed very strong traction in 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 the margin, and it's. It's because of the mix of business uh, where our, our risk business, which is, is slightly high margin, um, performed well. And what offset the, the actual margin is we, we had a very big deal in our uh, corporate business, which um, had a slightly lower margin. So if you look at the individual business units, very pleasing margin growth, but just because we had a very big deal in corporate, that pull back the margin a bit. So very comfortable with with, with where we have landed. Mm. The increase in the margin, I think, if I can sum it up, it's yeah. because we were able to, to drive volumes a, 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 a lot higher in the current year. Uh, all right. Well, I mean, uh, client wallets uh, in South Africa do still remain under pressure. Are there any uh, pockets of the business that were vulnerable to the constraints? Yes, so, so so we definitely saw um, higher, you know, higher persistence in the first half of last year. We still saw elevated persistency in our mass and foundation business, in particular, in particular where we saw continued high lapses from from our clients, and we expect still a first a, a tough six months in the first half of this year, and hopefully we'll have some relief. Um, with with inflation remaining a little bit lower and possibly some interest rate cuts in the second half of the year, which mm. which has been a big uh, big pressure uh, on consumers, the higher interest bill that they face on a monthly basis. Yeah, we also saw that pressure translating into higher impairments in our lending businesses during the course of the year. Mm. Uh, Kaspar, uh, in terms of your building blocks of being the go-to company for all your customer financial needs, uh, is the puzzle complete or near completion? 
the the biggest uh, the biggest part of the puzzle obviously um is the 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 bank build that we're doing and whilst we do have a a banking offering you know that's built on on quite old technology so mm -hmm. we and we and you know we call that our money account transactional offering we did see good traction in that business and that business made a profit this year but you know with the new technology that we're employing in in the bank build we're expecting to get a lot more traction going forward mm. Uh, before we close off the conversation, uh, going to your Africa regions, um, of course, there are challenges there as well in terms of the operating environment. Uh, you have obviously challenges like uh, currency devaluations. Um, and it's been a trend that we've seen with a lot of uh, companies uh, where now it's termed, those Africa regions are termed as the gift that keeps on taking. How would you describe your performance uh, in your Africa regions? So um, we actually had, despite you know the challenge that you that you mentioned, we actually had a very good result. So our profits in Africa region more than doubled for the year under review. Um, that was driven by you know strong strong life uh, operating profits. But the key strategy that that helped us um, improve our profitability is pivoting to a more corporate uh, type business where you're selling you know one year risks to mm -hmm. to corporate and that's been uh, where we've been able to turn around our profitability uh, in east and, and and west africa currency devaluation is yeah is is a concern we we saw uh, obviously malawi had, had a big currency devaluation towards the end of the year and obviously, uh, Zimbabwe, um, whilst we had very good profits um, of, of almost two billion, a lot of that was negated by an increase in the foreign currency translation reserve. Uh, so the net increase in net asset value was only four hundred and fifty million. So mm. that is that is a, a issue we need to keep on watching. Ah, all right. Well, thank you so much for your time and giving us more detail on those numbers that came out uh, from Old Mutual uh, this morning. Casper, that was Chief Financial Officer at Old Mutual, Casper Trosky.